god! What in the hell? It's hurting my head. <laughs> shush up, Rick. Shush, shush up, Nick. He called him Almost Rick. Call me Rick. Yes. <laughs> what the? <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. I haven't seen this movie in forever. It's That's been a while for me, too. When it popped up, I was like, oh, I really want to watch this. Yeah. I can't even remember if I ever watched it. I feel like I saw it in theaters, but my memory of it, if so, is just like, like barely anything there. Isn't there a ride at, at Disney World? Yeah. That's what I oh, thought. yeah. Haunted Mansion, but. Uh, they have some things that are tied to it, but at the same time, it's just like, uh, it it's not... Have you been on it? I have, yeah. Oh. It, it was a lot of fun. Um, I remember the singing, uh, the singing statue heads. Mm -hmm. Those were a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I also remember, <clears throat> I also remember a few other things. There were, um, yeah, there were, yeah. Fortune tellers. Yes. In the yeah, yeah, ball. yeah. Oh, man. Um... Which, the you know, creepy. What was he? Was he a butler? <clears throat> yes. Yeah, and then the maid. Wasn't there a maid? I think so, but the uh, butler. Yeah. It, it, the, yeah, the creepy butler. He was like white faced, yeah. almost like the, and he had white hair and it was all. Uh. That was me. Oh. So, whole. All things considered, the Haunted Mansion has a very interesting history. Because this is the first film I think they made after uh, after uh, Pirates of the Caribbean was such a big success. Hmm. And they were just like, you know what? We have all these other attractions that we can turn into real, like, real cool things. Mm -hmm. And the Haunted Mansion was something that they start. I think that's where the idea started. And they got Eddie Murphy to be in it. And they got a few other fairly big name stars. You know, Jennifer Tilly, who, um, when I was younger, I had I had the hots for her. <laughs> in Liar Liar, I couldn't help myself. I mean, I was just saw her in that. I was like, damn. Also, uh, also, there's a very cre like semi creepy interview with her while she was promoting this film. Uh, you know, like the late night talk show host, you know, Jimmy Kill or Jimmy Kimmel and all. Well, mm -hmm. this was Jimmy Kimmel just after he got done being on The Man Show. Mm -hmm. And he just got the job, like, hosting Late Night. And they basically, like, were promoting the film. And uh, they were talking about, like, Jennifer. She was just like, she was just like, yeah, so the the whole film, I have to, I have to really accentuate what I'm saying with my mouth. Because where I don't have my body to show off, like, like be animated with, I have to really be animated with my mouth. And uh, J and Jimmy's like, I understand what you mean by, uh, you know, not by because we can't see your body, we can't be as, like, drawn to you. And she's like, Jimmy, what are you doing right now? He's like, I'm going to be perfectly honest, I am staring at your breasts because they're, like, during the interview. <laughs> I'm not joking. This was an actual thing. What? Yes. Yes. The same Jimmy Kimmel, what? who who also did blackface as Carl Malone. Yeah, Sarah Silverman gets canceled for it, but yet Jimmy Kimmel gets a pass. <laughs> right, hmm. awesome. Right. It, it, see, this is the shit that just doesn't make sense to me. It's just you know, Jimmy Kimmel can do stuff like that and get a pass, and then other people do it and they get they get chastised. Whose dick is he sucking in, in like, the Hollywood higher-ups? Is he, is he fillet, was he one of, like, the people who was, like, daily filleting Harvey Weinstein? I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't know, but did you see, um, what's that Adam guy's name? Did you see him, uh, doing the Cher song? Uh, what was Adam, it? who? Is it Lambert? Um, I don't know. I don't. Re Do you know the Muffin Man? Yeah, that. It, it, well, Adam Lamb. I know who Adam Lambert is. I know like 
he was on the Jimmy Kimmel show, and he does that carry like where they they have like singing things. Oh, where he does like the ra- they do the randomizer for the mm-hmm. oh, eh. I I don't really. I, it was really funny. I I I just don't watch Jimmy Kimmel. I don't. Um, I don't. Well, I didn't watch it like the episode, but I saw it on a short, and so I looked it up. And I watched that, so. Yeah, I, I just don't watch late night television because it's just it's. Well, I don't. I just don't watch television TV anymore. I, yeah, I don't watch cable we anymore. We have streaming. Well, so. no, even if it's on YouTube, it's like I've literally blocked from my feed all of them: Seth Meyers, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, uh, heck, e- like even Conan. I blocked everyone oh. from my feed because I just don't do not care for late night talk stuff anymore. And the stuff that it pops up occasionally every now and again that I see that makes it through is like that Charlie Puth one where he like made that song with like the coffee cup. Yeah. And that was I just neat. like the singing uh, that's on there. That's the only stuff that I watch. Yeah. And and then I know that James Corden did the one where he did like the carpool karaoke and that was cool for like a minute. Then you started reading about how big of a dickhead he was behind the camera. It's like, ah, okay. Yeah. So, they're all assholes. <laughs> all right. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, Haunted Mansion. Don't know how we arrived on that <laughs> conversation. I guess it's just me mentioning, like, the promotion that Jennifer Tilly did for this. But, anyway. Sorry. <laughs> Remember it so you don't have to. Well, if you've ever been to the Magic Kingdom, chances are one of your favorite rides is the Haunted Mansion. And how could it not be? With it in one okay. creativity, gothic atmosphere, and so many clever visuals that no one could see it in one view. The Haunted Mansion has become one of the theme park's most praised attractions. So, when Disney had a surprise monster hit with their Pirates of the Caribbean movie, they figured maybe bringing the same amount of cinematic effort to one of the most famous rides of all time might be called for here as well. Best way to begin? Well, let's have Eddie Murphy star in it. Ruin! <laughs> How could one of Disney's most playfully dark and gothic ideas be given to such an obviously wrong actor? Well, you know why? Star power. Because Eddie Murphy at this point was just after Shrek. This is just after Shrek 2, actually. Because mm-hmm. Shrek 2 is in like 2004. This is in 2005. Mm. And that's why he got the part. Because, you know, he's Eddie Murphy. Is that how old this movie is? Yes. It is. Wow. 18 years old. This this film's old enough to vote. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what do you call a large pile of cats? A mountain. Uh, a mountain. <laughs> someone actually had one for me, but uh, oh gosh, here we are. What kind of candy do you eat on the playground? I don't know. Recess pieces. Oh. <laughs> what did the hockey goalie say to his teammates? I don't know. Let's get the puck out of here. <laughs> Let's get the puck out of here. Yeah. All right. Just had to squeeze in a couple dad jokes there. Just a couple. Not that A. Murphy can't do good work. He just does it so rarely. This is uh. like putting Will Ferrell in Batman or Sarah Silverman in Sophie's Choice. 
Or Pierce Brosnan in a music. Oh yeah, we're still paying for that. <laughs> some actors obviously don't go with some movies. And the sad thing is they tried to tailor what could have been a really awesome idea with a dark sense of humor to a story as intriguing as the ones you find on the side of Happy Meal boxes. Help! Even Happy Meal boxes are looking creepier than anything in this film. <laughs> so, does anything capture the original creativity of the ride? Well, let's take a look with Eddie Murphy's Haunted Mansion. So a boy, who literally has nothing to do with anything, shows up just so the house can tell him to piss off. <laughs> well, you heard the movie, it's a go away! It wants to get rid of us as much as the writing does. We then transition via shit-eating grin to Eddie Murphy trying to sell a house to overactor number one and overactor number two. It's just what we've been looking for. There aren't enough plugs. Doyle! Every house we look at, you find something to pick at. <sighs> I just know what I like. Mm. Would you like a divorce? Because I'll bring it. Hey, hey. Uh, if I had a nickel for how many divorce? Your lady and body. Yeah. Asher just decided to pay us a little bit of a visit. Go to Ashy, your bed. go lay down. Come on. That go. big comfy soda bed right there. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he just walks right through it. <laughs> Horses were caused by plugs. Actually, that sounds worse than I meant it to be. <laughs> we love the house. He closes up another deal at the Ricky Tiki room where the happy couple wants to celebrate, but Murphy has to get to his anniversary dinner in time for. Oh, it's this bullshit setup! See, I didn't know if they were gonna do the clumsy dreamer who has to prove himself, the cowardly weirdo who has to prove himself, but now I see it's the workaholic douchebag who has to prove himself. Because as we all know with family films, there's only three stories to tell. And seeing how the last film combining a black father with ghosts used this method to such fucking greatness, it only makes sense oh. to use it again here. What a world of maybe a child-sized handful of possibilities. Did you just sell their house? I sure did. Because we're looking to buy. And seeing how Murphy clearly, for some reason, doesn't believe in business cards, he misses the dinner with his very angry wife. Okay, we'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take off this weekend. What? Like we did last year with the kids, just us and the kids for the whole weekend. How's that sound? How about Orlando? I've voiced so many annoying characters for their attraction, surely we can get in for free. A <laughs> <laughs> travel-sized Chris Rock here is afraid of a spider in his room. And it's time I teach you how to kill a spider the right way, all right? Yeah, I remember how many kids had Houdini posters hanging in their room. Maybe there was a plot thread that was going to go somewhere, but again, they probably saw how well it worked in Ghost Dad, and seriously, movie, nobody should have this many strange connections to that fucking film. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. But they get a call to look at a house that could be a big payday for Murphy and decides to take a look with his family before their weekend break. Megan, don't slam the door like that. It's very sensitive. It's a car, Dad. Ah, it's not just a car. It's a very delicate piece of machinery. Shh. She didn't mean what she just said. She didn't mean that. Well, can't imagine why that scene was put in there. You'd see a less obvious setup with bowling pins having the words break me written on them. <laughs> so they enter the haunted mansion, while not badly designed, does look like every other creepy movie house you've seen before. Yeah. It's the same color palette, the same like the same like rustic style. It there's I no love personality. Those chairs. Oh, the chairs are awesome. But yeah, there's just no personality that says, This is me. I'm different. You know? Yeah. That's I like the haunted house from the first season of American Horror Story because Ooh, it doesn't yes. try to be a creepy man mansion, you know? Yeah. It's it like just tries to be the, a house. The events and things that happen in the house are what make it terrifying. Yes. And sometimes thirty six ghosts. And sometimes that's the most, like, sometimes that's just the best thing to do is just to not try with some things like that and let the story do the storytelling. Mm -hmm. It just depends on how good on how good it is. But anyway, nothing really sets it that much apart. Hey, look, there goes Casper, Morticia, Count Olaf, and Owen Wilson <laughs> reminding us to be scared. Really <laughs> creepy. <laughs> wow. Thus, we're introduced to the butler of the house, and like clearly Terrence the Stamp. only person having any fun in this film, Terrence Stamp. That's right, General Zod is playing this part. And yeah. if you want an idea for what you're in for, take a listen to how he says his very first line. Sarah Evers? <laughs> and I'm not even kidding, that is literally how he says every single line in this film. 
He has a machine gun vibrato that will make Elmer Fudd's laugh jealous. The master sounds wonderful. The storm has flooded the road. <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> He's like, I can, I, I can imagine Elmer Fudd playing his role. He's like, the, what, the storm has flooded the road. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Seriously, Zod, what are you doing in this film? Well, remember when I said I did some movies in the past I wasn't very proud of? Oh. Well, yeah, but I thought you meant, uh... What? Thought I meant what? I, I just kind of made the assumption that you... You... you thought I was doing porn, didn't you? It's just the way you're dressed, you know? It just... No, 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 I see. Just because a man wears all leather and exposes his man cleavage means he must be some sort of gentleman of the night. It's just most people outside of that industry don't usually dress that way. Well, according to the Matrix, all Houstonians dress this way. It doesn't mean I have sex for money. Okay, okay, I'm sorry I made that <laughs> assumption. Okay, Zod, ready when you are? Drop the pants and let's get filming. Well, I... <laughs> you were saying... Well, I'm doing it now! It's because certain opportunities have opened up for me! Opportunities? Yes, apparently when the Man of Steel lasers your balls off, everybody wants to see what it looks like. Might as well make a little cha-ching off of it. I'm gonna forget anything about your genitalia, Wissette, and get back to the review. Fine, I got work to do too. <laughs> this is one of Doug's bits that actually hits pretty good. <laughs> I will admit that, this is a good one. Well, I guess I should get used to that. <laughs> so Zod takes them to the owner of the house named Edward Gracie. Tell me, Mr. Ellis, do you believe in ghosts? Well, I have brought my career back from the dead several times. Does that count? Twice. Oh, <laughs> those okay, candelabras. Zod, I know the voice you're going for, yes. but has anyone ever actually... Yeah, the candelabras and, like... The, I like, like, some of, like, the set, like, motifs, like, yeah. they got. But, yeah. Heard another person talk like that. You're making Michael Crawford sound like the Micro Machine guy. I'm afraid there will be no leaving the mansion tonight. It's as dark as the music of the night, Christine. <laughs> so I can leave the mansion and decide to spend the night there. Will there be anything else that you require, sir? Well, are you gonna get some chocolates? <laughs> Pardon? You know the little chocolates they put on the hotel pillows sometimes? They have chocolates on the pillow. Save it for Shrek 12. <laughs> well, of course, no one actually sleeps, and they start snooping around the house because, well, it's a big creepy place and they all have penny gadgets. Plot point. Interesting. Murphy discovers the bath poles while the daughter also makes a shocking discovery. What do you think it is? Or at least it would be shocking if she was even the tiniest bit surprised by it. I think it wants us to follow it. It does. It wants us to follow it. Oh, kid. I'm <laughs> sure you're a nice person in real life, kid, but... Oh, God. That line read. And, and you can really sometimes attribute that to, like, a bad director. Because there's some directors who are great with kids. You know, like Steven Spielberg. Then there's ones who are bad with kids what is it with creepy mansions and people not being able to read voice lines with any kind of convincingness and stop don't open that door exactly <laughs> <laughs> or or like freaking mark Wahlberg from uh the the happening uh it's like what no <laughs> you're trying to steal from me aren't you what no that's ridiculous. Just, ugh. Oh. Dude, we're the iPhone generation. The only time we're ever actually shot. Totally I can remember some lines from the original House of the Dead. It's it took place in a mansion. Also, it's not an iPhone. It's only it's a Nokia. Yeah, two. it's a Nokia. I had one of those. Yeah, the Nokia bricks. Jesus. Yep. Those things are indestructible. Yep. But from the original House of the Dead, it's just... It, Most of the Sophie. lines I remember from two. Sophie! Yeah. It's like, like, oh, what was it? It's like, gee, we need to get to Sophie. And then, of course, House of the Dead 1 and 2 had terrible voice acting. It, it, it was it was almost expected. And it almost actually made the game, like, kind of funny when they were trying to be super serious in the original. Mm -hmm. uh, like, Curian, what are you doing? <laughs> Then it's not really a mansion, it's more of a castle, but mankind ill needs a savior such as you. Also, they have alcohol yeah, in the room <laughs> with the children. 
Yeah, a little. What do you think it is? Nothing could possibly go wrong with that. <laughs> it would be shocking if she was even the tiniest bit surprised by it. Or is it, it perfume? Looks like alcohol to me, though. So it looks like yeah, decanters. Yeah, it kind of looks like old decanters. Okay. Or at least it would be shocking if she was even the tiniest bit surprised by it. I think it wants us to follow. It does. It wants us to follow it. Dude, we're the iPhone generation. The only time we're ever actually shocked is when Facebook changes their layout. They did it again? <laughs> My life is over. The wife as well bumps into Gracie, who seems to be quite taken with her. So much so that he's where he only has one setting in this film. Whimsical. Grand parties, dancing, laughter. I really must show you. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's corpse. And above all, hope. Even when he's saying really sad stuff, he seems bizarrely inspired by it. These walls are filled with so many memories. Some of them painful. You can mm. tell by the smile on my face. I'm so upset. <laughs> mm. Elizabeth, hers is the story that haunts these walls. You see, a long time ago, she... Oh! I guess we're not doing that then. Odd transition. The kids follow the flamey smurf testicle deeper into the house where they come across a picture of a woman that, of course, looks just like their mom. What are you doing here? You're not supposed to be up here. This is unspeakable. Unspeakable. Inconceivable even. Come on, high five. You knew that was coming. Come on, give me a high five. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there you go, Doug. There's the five for you. Actually, you put your hand on the computer screen and give me a high five. Come on, high five. I want to stand me, up, bro. dog. I'll air five. Doug, yeah, air five. Yeah. I'm lazy. Also, also, good Wallace Shawn reference. I mean, come on. The guy's, the guy's a legend. Yeah. High five. If you actually do it, I will be concerned about you. Okay, Bazaar yes. enters the room and they tell them to hide. The children are not in their room. Children? What children? The children she wasn't supposed to bring along with that brainless husband of hers. Those rascally rapscallions really ruffle my riches. <laughs> if I had to listen to another word from that insufferable fool, I think I would have burst. Of course, sir. What a fool. I'll be the only one tasting the scenery, thank you. The final arrangements have been made. Nothing further will interfere with the master's plan. Now, if you'll excuse me, my monster from his slab began to <laughs> rise. <laughs> Meanwhile, Murphy stumbles across another big surprise. <laughs> Terrible CG that could have easily been done with makeup! Yes. <laughs> hey, DreamWorks is the only company that gets to turn me into a computer-generated jackass. He then comes across Madame Leona, who, if you remember from the ride, was played by the same actress who played Maleficent and Cinderella's stepmother. So obviously, mm -hmm. they had to get somebody just as dignified to play the- Oh, you fucking kidding me? There is great evil in this house. A devil's curse. It seeks to destroy you. Okay, look, I have nothing against Jennifer Tilly. She's funny, she's talented, and... Surprisingly random, a goddess of poker. But this- Yes! She's actually a really good poker player. <laughs> and she's married to... Uh, Phil Locke, I think is his name? Uh, he's a, he's a world champion poker, poker player, too. <laughs> They go to tourneys together and clean house. Nice. This is meant for a dignified voice. Every time I hear her, I keep expecting her to get legal advice from Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She then lifts him up into the air with a bunch of instruments because... Really no reason except it was on the ride. Actually, you know who I think would have made a great... Uh, a great one for the fortune teller? Hmm. Gene Simmons, the uh, woman who played uh, Sophie. I in... really thought you were... No, no, no. Not Gene, G-E-N-E -E Simmons, but Gene as in J-A-E-A. J-E-A-N Simmons. Shut up! That would have been pretty funny, though. That would have been... Uh, I was like, what? Like, but no, I mean, Gene, uh, Gene Simmons, the one who played so old Sophie in uh, How's Moving Castle. Ah. Well, yeah. I'm going to Crystal Ball. Because yeah, I could imagine her, like, really getting, like, like, like oh, I would say that it, that you are in for a bad time. Oh. And just. Buddy. Or Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews might have done good. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. There's a, there's a few. Ah! Trying to 
Still not sure why he has a gun. Who? Nostalgic. Oh, that's one of his old bits. Uh, one of his old bits is just like whenever something was so bad, he literally just went on a rampage and just started shooting, and just. Uh-huh. For instance, I'll sh- I'll show you I'll show you the one that uh, I remember the most. Let's see, nostalgic critic Sonic the Hedgehog. There it is. Yeah, this is old. Like you can see how much older this is. Yeah. But yeah, right here. This is the most uh, famous one right here. Like this. I mean, what else could you possibly teach that would be as stupid as that? Even you can learn something from a sloth. Fuck this show! Fuck this show! Yeah. <laughs> okay then. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing quite like an old school nostalgia critic clip. Very memeable. Probably back quit then. doing that because it probably kept getting him to monetize. For no doubt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, even though it's a fake gun, mm-hmm. it's not real. We don't care. Demonetized. Oh shit. Coming to the big screen, Walt Disney Pictures proudly presents Gargoyle. Yes! From the studio that put Eddie Murphy in the Haunted Mansion, Kira Knightley as a pirate, and Mila Kunis as the Wicked Witch, Ugh. we present another phenomenal miscasting with Kanye West as Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> I would be so fucking mad. <laughs> I'd be like, you're making gargles? You're making a gargles movie? Kanye West. Let's go. Fuck that. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. Gonna burn it down. I'm gonna burn down their whole goddamn studio. <laughs> <laughs> that is the worst casting. I, I love it, though, because it works for the bit. Yeah, I'm stoned by day and batshit crazy monster by night. <laughs> <laughs> Just batshit crazy in general, Kanye. <laughs> I was going to say, when you out crazy Alex Jones, you know you're the crazy one. Also, I'm apparently in a movie. Because you love our film versions of Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast. Even though we already have film versions of Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast. Why they do that shit? We bring you another <laughs> misunderstanding of source material by casting Ellen DeGeneres as a... Oh my god. Oh my no! God. Jesus. No! Oh. Bitch, who the fuck are you? <laughs> you can actually hear Kanye, her showing up on set that day. You're like, bitch, who the fuck are you? It's like, I'm your love interest. Oh, hell no. I'm your love interest. Say what, you clam chowder cracker? Don't worry, I've seen worse. I dated Anne Heche. That's an old joke, kids. If you don't. Oh, that feel, I feel bad now because Anne Heche died. Mm. Get it, ask your parents. Of course, if you're watching this, you are your parents. Okay. Not so fast. With Kevin Costner as the villainous Xanatos. I am Xenatos. <laughs> I don't care. I have sent out my robotic army. If you wish to save the people, you will have to fly up there and stop them. Bitch that fuck. I don't do any flying unless I have a crown of thorns or a halo. What are you supposed to do? Let all those people die? Maybe. Shut it, postman. I could buy you like my wife. I am Xanax Toe. Xanatos! I don't care. I didn't watch the show. His wings here <laughs> Gargoyles coming soon to a theater near. Hey, let go of me. What? I'm gonna let you finish, but I want you to know that Bonkers is one of the greatest shows of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie about a cartoon character and a cop. We have two. We need three. Hey, you want to hear about the show I'm producing that's gonna bomb? Bitch, don't make me chop you up and smoke you. I am Santa Hose. Jesus. Hey. Oh. So Crazy continues to tell Murphy's wife about his dead wife, blaming the events happened to his grandfather instead of to himself. And he loved her more than life itself. But they were from different worlds and couldn't be together. Hey, hey! We tiptoe towards racism not existing in Princess and the Frog. We can do the same thing here. Yeah! So the kids meet up with Murphy and try to find out what to do. For the truth to be known, you must find the key. Hey, what are you talking about, ball lady? What key? Enter the tomb under the great dead oak and travel down deep under the ground 
And there you will find the key that must be found. Okay, where is this clause that says that side characters must speak in bullshit riddles and rhymes? Why can't they just say go fucking here and do fucking that because well, she kind of did. <laughs> but she did it. She did, but she did it in a stupid, useless rhyme. I guess so, yeah. It's like, why? Why rhyme? Yeah, that would actually have been a funny bit. It's just be like, why, why are you rhyming all the time? She's like, I felt like I'd make it interesting. Sorry. <laughs> like, I think that'd be at least, at least a little bit more interesting. A fun scavenger hunt is one thing, but when lives are on the line, skip the Frank Gorshin cock tease. The servants help them in their quest and suddenly turn blue because... Pac-Man ate the corner pellet, I don't know. And they come across Morse boots recreating the ride. Dad? Yes. I see dead people. Hey, that doesn't <laughs> date this at all. Why don't you just throw in a getting jiggy reference while you're at it? He wants to try to get jiggy with my wife. <laughs> he did say that. Oh. <laughs> Pop culture references ruin. Oh, I'm not even going to fucking finish. I'm just... No, I'm done. Pretty much. Why the hell not? Pop I culture references ruined the films. Did I mention that you are the films. weakest link, Houston? We have a problem, and somebody just did a gray cave drawing of a buffalo. This was to have been her wedding dress. It would have been lovelier still if she'd ever had a chance to wear it. Uh, that's nice, Mr. Gracie, but we've been talking about this for three hours now. Can we finally change the subject? He was willing to throw everything away for love. Well, now he's broke, dead, and cursed. Nice move. Crap. I stepped in a 40s cartoon sound effect. <laughs> the crypt oh. creak and the tombstones quake. And as is typical of bad adaptations, they take one of the coolest parts of the original source and make it easily the most annoying part of the entire movie. It's by, um, by the light, by the light, by the light of the silvery. Mm -hmm. I gotta help my wife. Now. She'll be coming round the mountain Not when she, she comes. comes. When she comes, she'll be coming. <laughs> Are you laughing yet? No. 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 Fucking more. Where's the key? Where's the beautiful key? Find the key. Find the key. Find the key. Oh, you left your key. Oh, your two-year-old is laughing, but you're not. But you're not. Unless you're smoking a gigantic brick of pot. Brick of pot. <laughs> you're annoying and obnoxious, and you probably should have shot us. Please don't hold back then and give us what you got. What, what you got. got. Thank you, God. <laughs> 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 they did the laugh. <laughs> yes. That was good. Yeah. I love that bit. It's a warning. Now, how do you know that? I studied Latin for three years, Dad. You thought it was dumb, remember? Gee, a daughter who speaks Latin and a son with a Houdini poster? Stop! The realistic kid measurements are off the chart. The son stays behind as the daughter goes with him down below. The shield, it's the second marker. But it's guarded by the walking doll, causing them to drop the key. Did you get the key? I'm looking, I'm looking. I have everything completely under control. And I'm not just saying that because every person who has ever said that in the history of mankind has always met with the exact opposite reaction. Uh... Oh my god! Creepy creatures are actually in front of me and not CG! This is so rare in this movie! Come on, can't you see GN Kazoo or the Twilight Baby or something? Ah, oh, there you go. Fake CG nope. spiders. God, this film felt naked for a second. Sorry, I need the customary minute and a half to perform the overcoming my fears cliche. Minute 22, minute 23. Oh, I want just end this movie. So they seem to have the key. You got the key? Or do they? Oh, yeah, I got it. Got it. Oh, I guess they do. That was needed. And Murphy discovers that Zod is the one who killed Gracie's wife years ago. So he throws Murphy out of the house and locks up the kids in a trunk. You might be wondering, where the hell is the mother in all this? Well, naturally, she's still listening to Gracie's story this whole time. Christ, lady, you give more time to this guy than Peter Jackson does to The Hobbit. Do you believe that love is about second chances? <laughs> yes. Don't you recognize me at all? It's your Gracie. I thought certainly. Bringing you back to Gracie Manor would help you. So he tells her that she's the spirit of his lost love, but she has no memory whatsoever. It can't be her. 
It is her, sir. The gypsy woman prophesied her return. But she doesn't remember. In time, she will, sir. I assure you, she will. She'll remember after I beat it into her. I'm not Damn. Elizabeth. We wouldn't want anything to happen to the children now, would we? So he tells her that unless she marries Gracie to lift the curse, he'll... I don't know, send her kids through baggage claim? And she begrudgingly agrees. But Gracie is confused by her crying while walking down the aisle. Tears of joy. But you can trust your creepy, dark-eyed, whispery-voiced darling. Ooh. <clears throat> But the dignified Madame Leota rolls in like a hamster ball and gives Murphy the motivation not to give up. Hold on! With what? I'm finally gonna follow through on my loving the car joke! Only to have no reaction, thus not following through on the loving the car joke. No payoff. Ball? Yeah. Dearly beloved, oh, we are gathered together here in the sight of God. It's howling dog and accent. We are gathered here today to celebrate these two. So Murphy hurries to save the kids. Michael, Megan! Dracula fucking McCoy's asshole. So he defeats the knights. Yeah, I believe it too. And gets the kids out of the trunk to help him save his wife. Yeah, I got a few objections. Elizabeth didn't kill herself. He did it. He's been lying to you all along. That is absurd. Totally absurd. It makes me want to laugh. <laughs> Damn you. Damn you all to hell. Uh-oh. Zod's demon army has come to burn our heroes up. Or they confusingly decide to take him instead because he said the D word? So the spirits of do you really give a shit come in for do you really need a reason and take Zod away because would you even listen if I told you? God, what kind of world is this where Terrence Stamp goes to hell but Eddie Murphy is untouched? Pat, what's wrong? Are you alright? But it seems the poison has taken its effect on his wife, leading to Murphy's most genuinely authentic, phoned-in performance he has yet given. Sarah, Sarah, come on, please, Sarah. Sarah, I love you. Sarah, please, I love you so much. Come on, honey, we had dinner reservations, Olive Garden. <laughs> Those are so mildly annoying to cancel. <laughs> but the radioactive Navi turd arrives again, possessing her with the spirit of Elizabeth, who brings Murphy's wife back to life. <laughs> I thought I lost you too. I'm back, Sarah. I'm back. At least until Pluto Nash. That's a long uphill climb from there. <laughs> Thus the curse is lifted and all the spirits are freed at last. What's all this? Well, I don't know what we'll need. What are you talking about? We're going to heaven. You can't take it with you. The hell I can't! Don't you know? You never mess with a Sicilian when death is on the line. <laughs> Angels in heaven to gather at last. The tale is well ended for those who have passed. Now that I agree with. The only people who leave this film happy are those who are dead. Mom, Leota won't shut up. Are we there yet? So I guess not all of the souls were taken. The really annoying ones were left behind. And for some reason, the family decided to keep them. Because... Wouldn't you also want to take them home? No. no, instead I would take them out to the middle of a field, grab a sledgehammer, and start swinging. And, and I'd have... And, and just to, to pay off to a much better film than this that was released just a few years earlier, I would have it set to the Ghetto Boys' song Still and recreate the printer scene from Office Space. You ever seen that? Office Space? I don't think so. Yeah. it. I won't be able to... Here, I'll show you the... Office Space printer scene is it's literally like the most famous yeah office space printer scene there it is and then it's literally them leaving work and this printer been giving them shit the whole year and uh i'm get 
I'm gonna have to censor the audio because, you know, this song's copyrighted all to hell, but... There's like white collar gangsters. <laughs> I just do this with like all of the heads and the crystal ball just just completely destroy it. <laughs> just yeah. It's where they do not exist anymore. Oh my god. Yeah. But instead of a baseball bat, you use a sledgehammer. Yes. Sledgehammer instead of baseball bat. Anyway, yeah. Sorry. Just had to have that little Thing thrown in It'd there. be like having a hearing aid that's also a fire alarm. Nothing but pleasant sounds all year round. Which is definitely not what was in this film. What should have been a film on par with the creativity and fun of Pirates of the Caribbean instead turns out to be a series of performances, effects, and story threads all set on autopilot. Yeah, everything feels half-assed with no passion put into it. And it's really a shame. There's a lot of possibilities with the Haunted Mansion. Hell, a lot of the characters on the ride already seem to have stories set up, so why make up this one with Eddie Murphy as the focus? With all the reboots that Disney is doing recently, this is one that desperately needs it. I mean, come on, couldn't you see this as like an animated film? Like yeah. the same people who did Frozen or Wreck-It Ralph work on the story and the look? It'd be amazing, this is still an incredible opportunity waiting to happen. But until then, if ever, this is all we have. A wasted opportunity of creativity and imagination, leaving little to no impression whatsoever. Ain't no fucking way I'm hitchhiking a ride on this wagon anytime soon. But on the plus side, I think I've perfected my whispery voice butler, Sarah Evans. <laughs> I'm the nostalgia kind of guy, remember? So you don't have to. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that was the Haunted Mansion. Jesus. Yeah. I don't remember it being that bad, but apparently it... Yeah, I didn't remember it being that bad. I, I had some... I had my, my doubts about it. I was just like, I was, I was like uh, yeah, it's not it's not that good. But then all of a sudden I was like, oh yeah, it is that bad. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Which is sad because, you know, it's a film from your childhood. and Well, kind of my childhood. I was 17. But it's a film that you watch... And, you know, growing up a little bit, and you're just like, you're just like, ah, uh, it, it wasn't that bad. But then you watch it as an adult, and you're just like, okay, it was that bad. <laughs> it was that bad, and then some. Oh, So, yeah. I really just... <sighs> if they do remake this, I hope they put a good team in charge of it. And I think it should... I, I, I think... You should cast the people who are right for the like like right for the characters and not names. You know, like Eddie Murphy or Brad Pitt or Leo DiCaprio. Which uh, I don't know. If, I I don't know. Just cast someone. Just cast someone good. Yeah. In the roles. That's it. And also, you know, like actually study the lore of the characters of like the the you know the ghosts and the characters in the actual ride. And go from that. I think it would have done better animated, like he was saying. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And I think completely omit the other, like, I don't know, with the Ed and Murphy part, that's not part of the original no. story, is it? No, it, it's basically they throw in, like, a, a fish out of water. That That's the typical, like, name for the, um, for, like, that setup. Fish out of water. You know, like, someone thrown into a completely foreign concept and have to like sink or swim mm -hmm. um my favorite fish out of water one is basically i don't know if you ever seen three men and a three men and a baby you ever no. seen that it's it's an awesome sort of fish out of water scenario where these three lifelong bachelors who have you know have like the most epic apartment together they've like they're like they have like all like these cool friends these awesome parties and everything then all of a sudden, uh, one of like, uh, a, one day a baby gets left on their doorstep and is told that uh, it's like it's one of theirs, and hmm. basically, 
they they don't want to just like dump the kid off on child services or anything like that. Instead, they're just like, okay, well, I guess let's look after this look this little thing. And then it's just like they discover that the hardship of looking after a baby, mm-hmm. and it's actually like a really good flick. I I can I can say that it it's very funny. It's very engaging. There's a, there's some subplots thrown in that are a little bit eh, but. It's also like got one of the more famous ghost stories in terms of film ever because there's one scene where the curtains literally like like it's like someone is reaching out in the back and the curtains move mm-hmm. like someone's reaching out but according to like people on the set it's like oh no we just had the window open so it just looked like that mm-hmm. and there's people in the cast who are just like I don't know man I don't know it, it it looks like it. It looks. It, it's, yeah. It's it's one of the more famous like ghost stories of like old movies. Hmm. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, the Nostalgia Critics uh, review of the Haunted Mansion. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed. And uh, I guess uh, until next time, signing off. I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. We'll see you then. Peace.